Perfect. So here we go. This should work. So welcome everybody to UDK Tuesday number 232. We are welcoming um, as first guest to this semester, Mr. Tezuka from Tokyo in Japan upon invitation from Professor Subihano. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, I would like also to say, first of all, welcome to the Tuesdays again, summer semester. Again, sadly, uh, online. But we were also now commenting that even being online, there, there are some advantages. Uh, and one of them definitely uh, can be the one that we can really enjoy today, which is to have a, a, a very interesting lecturer, uh, architect from Japan. You know that usually it's not so easy to bring people from Japan uh, or to go from here to Japan. But in this case, this is an advantage of the online system so let's take it positively yeah? so it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you to uh, Tezuka. I mean, Tezuka is an office from uh, Tokyo established in 1994 by uh, Takaharu Tezuka who is going to talk to do today and Yui Tezuka so they are really uh, really in my point of view very highly uh, original uh, Japanese architects you know? I mean they they have been following uh, the way they think and they work and they live, as far as I know, like uh, something that comes together in a, in a very sort of holistic architectural idea that is behind it. I, I uh, remember when I read also from, from them expressing that architecture is overall the power to change uh, people's lives. And even though this might be a common sentence, uh, for many people, uh, I think in the work of Suzuka, it is a reality, and you will see very soon why. I believe that in these times of change that we know, of, of ways of life, of working, of education, which will be a key question also in, in the work of the Suka, uh, the integration of uh, uh, environmental questions in architecture, etc., etc., it is important not only to theorize, but also to show, this is my point of view, with real and built architecture, how um, living and, and moving spaces uh, can really become uh, a response to this important question. So his work, uh, their work has been really recognized in, with many awards and many honors and, and prizes. Uh, they give lectures and, and have been teaching and uh, giving lectures all around the world. And I mentioned that because I, I had the opportunity to, to meet the Suka. Uh, in, in a strange series of coincidences, uh, I mean, for some strange reason that we don't know, we both were invited to, to give lectures in many different uh, places. I, I remember Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia some years ago, later on in Bangkok, in, in Thailand, uh, some years, uh, probably years before in, in Quito, Ecuador. So for some strange reason, uh, I, I had the, the pleasure to know him, uh, Mr. The Sukas, and I was from the very beginning very interesting when I hear uh, the way he they presented uh, their work in a, in in and starting in a way or not starting and focusing at some point in this now so well known Fuji kindergarten that became uh, not only a very interesting building in itself but a whole um, idea about how uh, teaching, learning, playing with nature, with uh, a different concept of architecture, became a, a, very, a very, very personal uh, way of uh, approaching architecture. I think uh, among the very interesting Japanese scene that you all know uh, of architecture, uh, the Suka is a very special one, a very original, different, I would say personal, in which uh, the use of materials, the integration with nature, as you will see, the, and moreover, the human being specifically in many cases the children which, make, which makes a question about scale and many other things are in my point of view one of these triggers and reasons of the architecture i won't speak more uh, i will leave uh, mr tezuka explain the work and ideas and it's a pleasure to have you uh, with us uh, okay thank you uh, do i have some, still have time to talk <laughs> Okay, okay, so I get my secretary to start my lecture.
the I have to I think I have to turn on the what's okay oops I have to go back to the top and is it the sound on yes. okay it's good yes the sound should work okay good okay uh, today I'm going to start my lecture from my standard menu because there are some uh, first year students and uh, but if you know about my lecture, you may find I'm making same jokes, but you have to make same reactions. Otherwise, you know, people get disappointed. Okay. And the people think so I'm donut shop, but uh, I don't make that. I don't just sell on donuts. So I'm going to show other merchandises too. Okay. Do I have to? Explain and I'm explaining about uh, my partner, my boss. You can see I'm in blue all the time, and my wife is in red. And uh, the reason why I'm showing this is that you know my family is like this. And uh, the reason why I'm introducing my family like this is that uh, you know my concept is coming from my family. Always we say. The uh, history of architecture is as long as the history of human being. Because we think, when we started uh, thinking, uh, when we started making uh, architecture, we started our civilization. That is what we think. So, you know, uh, hold on just, I think somebody is making noise. I think somebody needs to turn the mic microphone off. Mute. Okay, as long as you are keeping quiet, you can keep it on. Okay, okay, it's fine. Okay, it was quiet. Okay, still you can laugh. And um, so, you know, uh, there are things, uh, never changes uh, in the history of architecture. And some students are trying to get ideas from internet. And what is the latest uh, demand? What is the latest uh, mood? And uh, it's useless because when the project is published, the idea is already 10 years old, 20 years old, it's obsolete. And uh, we are building things for 50 years from now, possibly 100 years from now. So, you know, new or old or irrelevant doesn't make any sense. So if we have to try and try to make a barrier no, you know, which works next 50 years, which never got old. So, you know, always say, you know, we are trying to find uh, something new, yet you feel like it's been there a long time. That is what we are trying to get. Okay, I'm trying to start my lecture from my old project. I think you know Japanese used to live in this kind of house. It's very cheap after World War II. And the family said, I love to hold on. There's something wrong with the network, okay. You know. The family said uh, you know we love to have a um, lunch on top of the roof. What? Now, usually, whenever we uh, get a new project, we try to have a nice uh, food and some talk about the weekend. Then they said we spend the time on the this roof. It's very strange. So then they were showing this picture. Oh my goodness. It's dangerous. And I had uh, uh, many Japanese friends that it's illegal in Germany, but in, it's illegal in Japan too. But I don't know whatever it is you know that is what they are and then there's no handrail some ceramic ties are falling off and i told them it's very really dangerous but uh, the parents said oh our two daughters are coming out with us it's okay so we are coming together so we built them so we made uh, this drawing and then you look down the barrack from the edge of the residential area and this is Holy Mountain. 
and this roof is inclined. And whenever we talk about uh, this uh, roof house, this called this house, this house is called roof house. And we are talking about um, we talk about McDonald's. We tell students if you're having first date, you should never go to McDonald's. Because if you go to McDonald's, you are sitting in front of a small table. And then you have to keep talking to your new boyfriend or girlfriend. But there's not so, so much things to talk about. And the things start going wrong. So that's the worst place to make a uh, no, first date. And I tell my student, if you want to have a first date, you should go to Riverside. And the Riverside close to um, my university. There are many couples on the sloping side, river bank. And I found out students are sitting as a couple some distance. And then in McDonald's, when silence comes, very, very awkward. But when you are sitting on the sloping side, you are not looking at each other and you are looking to the river. And the silence is not awkward anymore. It's all, it's very romantic. And secondly, you are sharing the same view. So you say, oh, there's a splash on the water. Oh, there must be a nice fish down there. It's stupid conversation. It works on the riverside. The tertiary, the sloping side, it's easier to lie down, and easier going, easier to go on next stage. You know, so sloping side is very good for, you know, first date. And what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, inclination has meaning. So I kept the rooftop to be uh, inclined. So this is how, you know, roof is looking like, looking, uh, you know, sloping down to the bury. Actually, this is a, exactly the same slope as uh, the ground. And then younger sister said, I like to have this skylight. And then the sister said, I want to have my skylight too. And the father said, I want my skylight. And the mother said, I want skylight. And then family wanted family skylight, the guest skylight. And they said, I want toilet with a skylight. And I want another a, a skylight for bathroom. So we started having a, a eight skylight in such a small building. It's only 99 square meter. And they said, are we allowed to have lunch out of the roof? Because we used to have lunch out of those small roof. You know, so, you know, we put table and um, benches. And then they said, uh, you know, we want to keep some privacy. Okay, we can have some wall around. And then the wife said, oh, by the way, my mother, I mean, grandmother is living down this way, about eight meters. And we want to make sure if she's still alive in the morning. So could you make sure this corner is lower so we can see if she's alive? And they said, oh, we want to have a kitchen too. Let's have a kitchen. And then oh, winter is very cold. We have to have a stove. Then summer is very hot. So we started having shower behind the wall. So there are so many things going on. And this is how it built. And um, as you can see, there's no handrail. There's a story about it. Actually, in Japan, we have to have a handrail if you make a rooftop, of course. But uh, the client, actually, he works for government. He has he's qualified to make put a stamp on the planning application. He said, "Oh, why do we have to have a handrail on top of the roof?" Well, it's uh, architecture cool. But he said, excuse me, if you look back our old house, we didn't have a handrail on the roof. If you look around, no house has handrail on the hill. No house has a handrail on, on the, in the barrack. Why do you have the handrail? Somehow he convinced me. So we built this without handrail. People love it. But now, just that this house became so famous. Now, uh, we can find this house 
in the school book, all, almost uh, 60 or 70% of the students in Japan are uh, learning about this uh, roof house. Now, you know, this house is more than 20 years old. It means they started being active. Now they want to do the same. So they go to city hall, you know, government, local government, say we want to make a roof house without hanjo. And always our uh, city also they said, no, no, you can't, you have to have hanjo. Then always they bring a school book. Do you know this house? Very famous. And this house has no hanjo. Then always government official said, oh yes, we know this house. That is, that is the reason why you can't do it anymore. So no one can do it anymore. So it's original. Okay. We will always win. And rooftop like this. And they always, uh, the, uh, you know, this project uh, with people on top. But actually, when we published this 20 years ago, you know, Japanese magazines were much more serious. Even European magazines, very small percentage of magazines are showing people on top. They were really serious. And for the first time, Japan Arctic Magazine put client uh, on the page. And then you know, usually on the next issue, you know, there are some critique, mean critique. They make a comment. Always they criticize. They said rooftop is very hot in summer, very cold in winter. I I don't see it in use. And then the client wrote them back for the first time in their 90 years history of the Japan Arctics magazine. No, 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 no. You know, rooftop is very hot in summer, of course. So it means you have to use a rooftop for sunlight, it's very cool. And in the winter, it's very cold. So you should use rooftop after lunchtime, it's warm enough. You know, people are very strange. In summer, you go to beach uh, in summer, but sand is 50 degree. In the winter, you go for skiing, minus 20, that's human. And uh, just like a cat, we used to find a comfortable environment moving us around. At some point, we tried to change the you know, environment. That's the reason why we are having trouble. That became a very, very strong statement. So since then, and this became our style. It's awful kitchen, don't do it. We didn't have money. It's a present, this is a present from the carpenter. Worst kitchen I've ever seen. Shower, we are not sure if they use it. One day, my wife, Yui Tezuka, got a call from client. It was so nice, it's no so nice to take hot shower in cold typhoon. So uh, my wife and Yui Tezuka told Mrs. Takahashi, you know, you have to be careful. Then, uh, Mrs. Takahashi told, I uh, don't worry, I am wearing t-shirts. So I don't think she understood what we are worried about, but they're very serious. So you go, people go up and down. I know that you don't have much time, so just we skip some slides, you know? It's like a game, it's a popping up and down. And the only way you have a red and blue hole on the edge, you see like from underneath. So, when we completed, actually after we completed this project, this kindergarten asked us to design a roof house. They wanted a roof house from the beginning. And then when we went to see the kindergarten. And I said, uh, well, it's an awful building, but the atmosphere is good. So you don't need to build a new kindergarten. And there you got upset. Usually, architects come to ask for the project, but we declined. So they, and actually they said they liked it. So they were trying to show us around all the leaking point. So we are convinced we have to make a new building. So we tried to get a new idea. 
Hold on, just I think something wrong with the sound. Can you hear? Kids love to making making circles like this. So this is a kind of genetic memory between in the, the rebel cortex. So we made it circle so that they can keep running all day long. And um, there are some trees on the way that make sure trees don't die. So we had to make sure we don't cut the roots. So if you were keeping trees, you shouldn't cut the roots to tree dies. Instead, the rooftop. Okay. And then the owner, I mean, the principal said, I don't want handrail on the edge. Excuse me, you get, you're going to get sued. And um, he said, how about having a net sticking out from the edge of the roof so you can catch a children falling off? Well, it's impossible. But somehow he convinced us. So we made some drawings with a net sticking out from the edge of the roof. And we went city hall. And of course, and they said, uh, are you insane? So we came back to kindergarten. They said, we are crazy. And then principal said, oh, no, 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 yes, I'm serious. You have to go back. And they made a call. And when we went, to, went back to city hall, government official was so serious this time. And it's amazing. They are taking our, our comment very seriously. And they realized, you know, all of them are from this kindergarten. They have been running this kindergarten more than 70 years. So it means, and uh, most of our people, official, government officials, are from this kindergarten. And they have been trained to listen to principals since they were three years old. And they became an you know, official. So they said, oh, you know, we have to listen to principal. So we could keep the idea around the tree. You know, you know, mayor has has election every four years, but the principal doesn't have reaction election. So they are much longer. So we get the kids on the net more and more and more. Like 40. And this kid, this kid loved the tree, so he's eating the tree. And the way he sees the kids from the knees, nice uh, no, monkeys in zoo, eating time. And when we designed the kindergarten, we are making, uh, we are breaking rules. Uh, there used to be lots of rules. I know the old room has to be square. Or has to have a thick wall and ceiling height has to be more than three meters. But the principal said, Oh, no, 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 we need to see the kids on top of the roof. So you have to make the roof as low as possible. And we don't want any wall between the classrooms so that, uh, you know, uh, we can bring them to bring up together at Montessori school. There are so many things uh, we didn't follow the you know, uh, building design code. But, uh, you know, of course, local government were not happy about it. But the principal said, you know, they are not paying. You should listen to me. You know, we do what we want. So we built it. But always we having trouble with locals. Then suddenly everything gets changed. You know, OECD, uh, they have a section called Center for Effective Learning Environment. And uh, they asked the United Nations, UNESCO, and uh, UNICEF to find out the best school building in the world, actually best actually school itself. You know? And then our, all, I think 33 countries submitted 166 representatives, and including universities, high schools. And suddenly, uh, you know, we got the call from, from Japanese government you know, always we are afraid of our Japanese government. Always they criticize us. But that time is very different. Something wonderful happened. You know, the school has been selected, uh, Fuji Kindergarten has been selected as the best of the best in the world. And interesting about Japanese government is the Japanese government never listened to Japanese, never listened to Chinese, never listened to Korean. 
but they listen to European American. They said, "Oh, it's wonderful." And suddenly we got the uh, you know our Minister Prize, and then you got the prize in Paris, and then suddenly, and what my wife has appointed to be the one to set up a new standard in Japan. So it's very good. Now we, if we want to do something, uh, I ask. Uh, we ask uh, my wife to talk about the new rules, and if she says okay, we can do. So we are the government. It feels so good. No, thank you for OECD. Now it's how it's like you know. So I don't have time to talk about. It. Oh, by the way, this boy is not uh, washing his boots. He's putting water into his boots. And now. As you can see, it's open. I remember, you know, I think she, uh, she's from uh, Berlin. She's one of the professors in Berlin. Maybe she's still there, you know, but she's not from architecture. She's from pedagogical field. And she came to this kindergarten. She, she asked the you know, principal, you know, it's so open. What happens if they get rain, they get wet? And the principal said, oh, in Japan, and when they get wet in rain, they change. What would you do in Germany? Um, no problem, but, uh, but you know, still they may get wet. What would you do? Oh, in Japan, usually kids are waterproofed, so you can wash them clean. No, oh, isn't they, aren't, aren't they waterproofed in Germany? It was a very strong statement. And remember that we are talking about the roof house at the beginning. You know, in the winter, uh, we go to beach. I mean, in the winter, in the winter we go to skiing. In the summer, we go to hot beach. You know, we can survive in many environment. You can see they're showing how they spend time in rain. They are waterproof. And there's one more thing I need to talk to the students. You know, this is not Japan, it's Bali Island. And then I think you can hear the background noise, beep. And then the beep uh, wasn't there when we were recording this. And when we came back to Japan, we found out that there's a noise. I, we, we used to think there's a kind of glitch of our iPhone, but the scientist who invited us explained the noise has been there. It's in jungle, the noise of the noise from the jungle. And but in jungle, you cancel that noise in the brain. But when you came back to Japan, you are not a part of jungle. That is why you can't cancel it. And if you should know your body is doing the same. Your heartbeat, breathing is making huge noise. But they erase it in the brain. You get used to. But if you dive under the water, you can listen to your body noise because you get disconnected. Okay. And now they are signed saying, oh, maybe that is what's happening to some kids in the modern building. These days we have a very, very fantastic, uh, you know, uh, very high quality architecture especially with the German window frame. No sound coming in, very airtight, no noise coming in, very quiet inside. But when they are disconnected from the rest of the world, they start listening to the body noise and they think about it, you know? So what we are saying is uh, our latest modern meaning could be the cause of the, you know, some autistic uh, symptom. You know, you know, my point is we shouldn't disconnect them from the rest of the world. Okay, this is some medical paper. And also I wrote some uh, paper for our uh, United Nations. Um, and some books, you can buy this book. By the way, do the time, I don't have time. Now this is how they divide the classroom, okay? They don't work. They're supposed to work with uh, teacher. They watch basin, they talk each other, land well. 
monkey trying to fish another monkey. This is where Santa Claus comes down. A Japanese Santa Claus only. It's too small for German Santa Claus. They stack in the frame to frame. Japanese are much smaller. And we used to have, uh, no, actually we still use uh, incandescent light because there's some problem with, uh, you know, LED light with blue light, you know. And now we take can turn on the light only where they want. You know, instead of using latest technology, they are trying to teach them the meaning of the energy. So this building uses very, very small amount of energy. And some people are complaining this building is airtight enough. You now, air conditioning may not work so much, but they don't know that we are not using air conditioning. Now, this is the movement of the kid, you know, Past nine to thirty past nine. Within twenty minutes, he moved this much. Actually, until last time, he moved six thousand meters, six kilometers. And uh, actually, average of the movement of the kinetic is about four thousand meter. It's about five times of the normal movement uh, in normal kindergarten. This is showing the movement of the kid. 傾斜のついた屋根はそのまま運動場として使えそしてこの屋根に上がった子供たちは手塚夫妻が思い描いた通りほとんど例外なく全部で知りたいそう、you yeah, don't need to tell them what they should do it's spontaneous movement and this is what we need to talk about today. You know, usually, you know, we try to teach them, but you know, when they want to learn something, they will do it by themselves. You know, some people say, when you tell them to climb up the tree, they fall down. But when they are climbing the tree by themselves, Always they come down. Do you understand? It means they they do the work when they are ready. Now just we are designing a, our elementary schools and then some schools, and they still you know we try to make things always some spontaneous uh, learning environment. Today I don't have much time to talk about, but I'm going to show you later. You know, this is uh, how, you know, another building is looking like. And we made uh, we five floors, uh, seven floors in, in five meters tall. But it's okay because we are the government now. We have to think about safety. So we put the uh, kids, make sure it's safe. And then we put our kids, as our kids, all for traffic environment, traffic uh, in Tokyo. They learn how to help each other. Okay. Well, you know, I think just I have a very small amount of time, so maybe I should skip this. Sorry, just I think you know, I think you know because I think we should focus on its environment. Today. You know this one, you know. We tied the timbers and uh, we collaborated with artists. Point of that is that, you know, we don't need to tell them what they should do next. This net uh, bring, gives them opportunity to move around. I think this is really architecture. I love this picture. Okay. Once you put them in, they don't come out until lunchtime. And after lunchtime, they go back in. They don't move from this place. You don't need to tell them what they should do. Architecture provides everything. You don't need to bring two. Always father is tired. 
my son. He used to be good, not anymore. <laughs> okay. I think you know this uh, project. You know, uh, another kindergarten with like umbrella. And uh, again, we are trying to make endless circulation. We call it the bubble plan. And when you put a uh, room like a bubble, you can connect functions as you like. It's not, it's quite different from square building. It's very free planning. That is what I like about it. We got World Architecture Facebook Prize with this. Very simple architecture. Okay, now it's a very important project. It's called a dish of kids. You know, we designed a museum. Actually, we were told to design the kids museum. But usually we don't like kids museum because in normal kids museum, we put kids and the parents are not allowed to get in. So parents wait in the cafe or go somewhere. They come back. It means you can't be with your kids. We don't like it. So we said, uh, you know, we are going to make entire new museum, the museum like a zoo. But we don't have money to buy lions. We don't have uh, money to buy, you know, booms, you know. You know so uh, we put the kids instead. So this is a concept we make. Actually, it's a design project. The reason why I'm showing this is that uh, I'm the you know, president of this kindergarten, uh, not kindergarten, the museum. So we put, we made a huge dish with soft surface, and they make stuff spontaneous movement, and then parents watch them running around in this dish, like a zoo, and the parents can drink wines outside. That's a concept. <laughs> Is a dish house looking like I got 25 meter diameter and then they're moving and then we create uh, artwork as they can be art of a part of artwork and they can be a part of making process and they love it no my daughter now and then I work with my student you come to my studio, you know, you can join this team. And these days, uh, you know, musicians are having trouble. So we made the uh, opportunity for the musician. Can you hear the music? Because... You can see that you know, uh, you know. Actually, this is my wife sleeping. <laughs> you know, this boy is enjoying the music. This is how kids were supposed to, uh, you know, learn the music. Instead of putting them in the chair, you know. So, it's free environment. See how kids move around. And also, space self is making spotless movement. It's because in this inclined side, they love to run around like this. And then, mother love running around. Still, mother is like a kid, you know. She's very good, you know, to jump. And there are many things going on. And now we just uh, jump some piano. Go. My daughter now. This is how uh, we create artwork inside of space. You know, these days we are trying to make rules, many things, okay? But 
we you don't need to tell them what they should do. Just we try to provide the opportunity. We are making choice. You know, same. It's same as a Fuji Kindergarten. You know, concept of the Fuji Kindergarten is over. And it's uh, empty, empty, you know, it's uh, represent Zen thinking, you know, do you know Zen? Zen is represented by circle. And then um, when inside empty, everything become interactive. There is no center. It's not about, uh, you know, enclosure. It's about openness. So you can choose the movement. And yes, I'm going to show you some pictures, but you know, I, it's it's not fun to talk just talk about the kids space if there's some charges now i wish i had more time so i passed already you know 40 minutes from the beginning some some uh, touch ah he's peter by the way <laughs> yeah. Actually, right. Actually, we have many couples in our office, and um, and usually you put a couple together to pro to work on the project. And I told them, if you don't finish the work on time, you want a wedding ceremony. So they worked very hard. We test our sound. Sound the part is very good. Another church. So I think I'm exceeding time. So just I learn some slides. And I, I must show you this project. This is Chamber of Commerce of Industry in Tomioka City. And this city is famous of this old mill. It's about 150 years old. <coughs> this is the first old past uh, modern meal uh, in Japan, actually in Asia, some people say. But the most importantly, this is a place uh, Jap Japan started the labor law for the first time. And uh, they had a weekend and their work hour was uh, the least restricted to only seven and a half hours. It's much better than my office now. And uh, this is where your labor law started. So it's very, very important place, Tomioka City. So uh, we told, we are told, we have to somehow it's an image of this timber building. But same time, this area is known to have latest technology. They have a company to send a space rocket to asteroid belt. So we have to combine past and the present, the future. So he said that we're gonna use timber, but the monocoque structure shapes uh, so almost you can hold the structure like this, the shape. So from this side, old city, we try to keep the facade of the old building, and we kept this shape. The back, the back, like a Millennium Falcon future. You know Millennium Falcon. And then side we have a, we are trying to keep the old uh, passage and going through the warehouse and then you then you get this kind of space. It's timber building. You know, these days uh, there are many architects trying to use the timber with steel work. We don't do such a kind, 100% timber, you know, just like a mesh structure. Everything's working as a part of structure. You know, this is not chamber of commerce anymore. You know, people come in like a shop and also being a part of the school, you know.
I'm at a church, you know. And then we try to keep the feeling of the old, uh, you know, Egyptian building because it's uh, trying to go back to basic. After, after sundown, it's so it's just basically too light. I think church is also a kind of school. Sorry. Sorry, just testing. It's a larger lot of angel we try to create. And we are making another church. It's uh it's actually this is uh, not the computer pattern. I drew it. Taking six months, and uh, we uh, we we cut hole through the timber timber wall, so light is coming through. It's not published yet. It's the first time I'm showing the lecture. It's really quite new project. And there are some students who doesn't know uh, this project yet, so I'm going to show you old project. Almost uh, six, seven, eighteen years old. Almost twenty years old. This year, I get the heaviest snow in the world, and we made a natural science museum. And the snow reaches about a five meter in the winter. Very, very heavy snow. In the summertime, like this, we have a huge window like this. And the winter. Snow piles up. And you see section of snow. So when we built this for the first time, and a curator of this museum, actually, it's a, this is called also called school for local school. Yeah, curator and the teacher asked us, is it okay? Is it safe? And uh, I think it's it's calculated. It's okay. Then they made a call again. I sure it's okay. So I asked the uh, uh, structure engineer. He said, "Yeah, we calculate this should be okay." They so got the call again. Scary. <laughs> and actually, snow leaches. Eventually, blue light comes in. So now I think coming to the end. This is how I raised. My son, just he was turning around 24 months, okay, only just two years old. And um, next day he started swimming like this. So people were really worried about the kids get drown drowned, but he never he never get drowned. And when he became 10 years old, he started diving more than seven meters by himself. And pe people said, "Oh, kids are getting drowned in the river." Very strong stream. And he's okay. Always he comes up with a fish with me. You know? he, even he can dive around the waterfall. People think uh, it's a kind of suicide. He don't he doesn't die. This is how kids are supposed to be. And uh, you were worried about handrail. You don't sometimes you don't need it. So I think just coming to end. Oh, people think, uh, oops, people think, you know, we need to protect the kids. Actually, you know, I think uh, they're much stronger than we think. I think we are spoiling them. So I think just uh, uh, we should let them think what they want to do. And then they grow up by themselves. 
And these these days, you know, city also did some professor talk about safety. Don't worry about safety. You know, you know, kids know what they can do. Thank you very much. I think I'm talking too much. I think I have to return the microphone to you. Okay. I think how can I, I can stop? Okay, I kind of close it and let's go back Thank to screen. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Haru. I mean, thank you very much. I mean, I, I listened to you several times, as I said before, and and every time I listen to you, I, I understand better uh, the very, I would say, within this very sort of casual and humoristic presentation of kindergartens and churches and music and children, there is behind a very, very deep uh, idea about architecture which takes it to the very, very, you know, conceptual level. Yeah? For example, I think how you are able to, with a simple shape, an oval mm. shape, or a net, mm. or, a, or a roof, uh, simply these elements that are sheer architecture and very simple in the concept, are able to allow all the liberty that at the end lies in the, mm. in the people. But it's not my turn. It's the turn of, of the students, so thank you. And we will listen to okay. Charlotte. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, you very discussed. much. <laughs> okay. Um, that was very interesting and very exciting to see your work. Um, I'm going to hand right over to our two first year students, Kay and Jan, in order to ask their first questions. And then I would like to ask everybody to post the questions either in the YouTube chat below the video or if you're an UDK student to post in our Telegram group um, if you have any questions. Okay. Hi, uh, thank Hello. you very much for the talk. Um, it was a lot okay. of fun. I enjoyed it very much. How you see architecture and so many different things in the bowl and stuff. I am a very, very big inspiration. Um, I was mm -hmm. actually preparing another question, but um, there turned out to be like some other ones. Um, so I was, I was asking myself, like, um, do you think, like, as an architect yourself? Uh, when architects just think for themselves like uh, and kind of break rules is this would this be kind of like a like a more leading way of of uh, thinking about architecture because like if everyone kind of did what they what they wanted to do it would be very much of a chaos i guess mm. right actually i'm trying to break a rule you know i'm a very good student <laughs> you know what i'm saying is it is easy to do something nobody has, has ever done. Because if you do something stupid, it looks new. But if you make triangle chair or something round chair, you know, nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to buy it. You know, when you do something strange, people think, oh, it's interesting, interesting. just like a YouTuber. But nobody follows. That is why I said, you know, I want something new, but which you have never seen before. So it means you have to make idea you can share with others. You know, you, you, you sometimes people think, oh, there are some rules, something, uh, I don't know, you know, something people do always, but it doesn't mean these are rational. There are conventions. You know, there are some other rules, stupid rules set up by, you know, maybe it's the old professors. You know, some of these are obsolete. And so always you have to see, uh, you have to see through the uh, true nature with your fresh air, fresh your eye, your fresh eyes. So I'm not trying to make something different. I'm not trying to break the rules. And, but we challenge. Uh, uh, when we find out something not rational, not good for the people, okay? Do you understand that means? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Good. Okay, would you like to ask another question or should we pass it on to John? Uh, uh, let's, let's pass it on to John John. Um, okay. thank, thank you for the lecture. That's 
was very interesting and the joke like um listened for a few times already but still very funny like laughing and uh, so my question uh, kind of um following the case question um, about the what is the true uh, needs of uh, people and uh, so one uh, my question would be about the freedom in the architecture like uh, mm -hmm. uh, should we um about the should we follow the behavior of the people or how far should the architecture shape the shape the behavior of the people according to the um the the understand understood of the architect and uh, where is the point that architecture start to influence or taking the control thank you okay i think that's a very very fundamental question no you know some things some people think oh you have to we have to think about the human mechanics do you know human mechanics it's really boring because you don't sit like uh, in a mannequin you know sometimes you sit like this and then you sit like this so you know human beings are, are in um, you know, and pretty and are not predictable you know but my point is you know what you like to do okay you no know? it doesn't restrict your design it gives you idea it helps you sometimes we say you know architecture is quite different from artwork architecture can be artwork but artwork is not architecture because always architecture has to be with human we are symbiosis to architecture architecture is symbiosis uh, uh, of human it means if you don't include human your architecture is weak it can't survive that is what you have to learn so you shouldn't think you know you know we have to follow or not you should be together do you understand <laughs> maybe you should talk to your professors but it's very very important part of architecture yes we are yes. symbiosis thank you and uh, the one last question about you say be together you mean people should be together right not only people okay that is another thing you know you know my and i love to be with other people you know but my point is i don't want to make sculpture for myself because we design architecture from for others just like you know just think you know if you were like a good chef if you're a good chef you have to make your cuisine for your customer right and you love to watch them smile and if you are making you know cuisine for yourself it's not far at all so no we are like uh, being a good chef for our customers do you understand yes yes After smile is a, yeah smile is our reward okay <laughs> thank you good. Okay. I have one more question. Um, I was I was wondering, like, as an architect, you probably have so much work to do and so many projects all the time. And it seems like um, you have a very good, like, uh, calmness to to see so many things, uh, in, maybe in the details or in behavior. Um, and I'm wondering, like, how is there some kind of a like secret to how you how you keep so calm and uh, keep like have the have the quietness to to see so many things and uh, maybe there's not just one trick but like yeah i was just wondering i think i can give you uh advice you try to make many friends and uh, your friends will teach you and uh, they have become a part of your knowledge you know you can't get the knowledge or wisdom from book you get wisdom from your friends or some elderly, sometimes from your kids. And when uh, I was making a lecture at Harvard, one of my one of my students asked me, 
Uh, how can I understand kids so much as you do? So I asked him, uh, do you have your girlfriend? And he said, yes, yes, you do. And I know that. And are you going to get married with her? So the, he said, I will. And uh, eventually you have kids. You understand it. As simple as that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Thank you. Maybe I will now go on uh, with reading a question, or rather a double question, um, that came from Kilian. He's one of our students also. Okay. Uh, so he asked, how did you deal with the special task to design a building for humans living in a world of other scales? Other uh, scales? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he means kids. <laughs> how did you and how did you integrate the process of learning in the kindergarten, or did you design mainly with the intention of creating a type of playground? I mean, uh, oh, I'm trying to understand uh, uh, your question precisely. Is it about scale, or you know, how I understand the kids? Just uh, could you elaborate more? Well, <laughs> maybe Kirian, um, I hope I understood you correctly. So I will try to specify. I suppose it is about the question that kids obviously perceive space differently due to their size um, and how kind of like I see, I see. Okay, okay. You know, it's again, same answer. You know, if you bring up your kids, you understand it. You know, that is what I learned. Sometimes, I use my students try try to design the space, but usually they don't understand it. They try to make a sculpture. They don't know uh, how kids behave. They forget how they used to be. Okay, and uh, our kids are giving us answer. Now, just uh, in my studio, you know, my all my students. Uh, watching how kids are moving around in my museum, they learn. So only one way to understand them is observation. You know, Peter Cook is uh, one of uh, my wife's teacher, and I know them. I know him quite a long time, and he told us observation is much more important than analysis. You know? Even you analyze the meaning of this tea you can't explain the taste okay but if you watch how people are drinking tea you understand the taste of the tea more do you understand observation is more important okay thank you thank you for that uh, Charlotte, do you want to take over? Otherwise, I have another question from a student. Okay, so Zara, who is uh, another student of ours, um, asked, why is or why do you think that architecture is art, but art is not necessarily architecture? Is it because art does not have the cent central focal point of the human, um, but architecture does? Okay, I, I think I should elaborate this more. You know, actually, this is a question I get from students all the time. You know, artwork is fundamental desire, fundamental movement of human being. Everybody does art. Okay, but it means it's not necessary for others. And so, evaluation is not important. Sometimes evaluation of that artwork can come 100 years from now, or one second from now, okay? But actually are different because, you know, people, if people don't like it, people are not going to use it, okay? And then architecture cannot survive. Do you understand? It's very different, you know? And uh, we serve people. No? Architecture cannot survive without human. And when you become architect, 
you will be given huge power. Sometimes, for example, we are designing a high rise now. It means one high rise is more than one billion dollar, one billion. Okay. But it's not mine. It's not yours. You will never be, it will never be you a part of yours. You are giving that power to do something good for others. That is a basic of architecture. Do you understand? And art is much more bigger existence. So maybe architecture is a part of artwork. You know, art is much more fundamental, much bigger existence. That is what I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a thing that I personally found very interesting in your presentation was the fact yeah. that you showed videos and you just mentioned observation. So you seem to go back to your buildings and to see how they do and how the people use them and how the people okay. inhabit these buildings. And I yeah. keep asking myself this because as a student, I keep looking to architects and often ask them whether they go back to see their building again mm. and to kind of get feedback from their building. Mm. And I would like to understand because you seem to really love the buildings that you create. Yes. You learn from them. If you go back and you learn for the next building, how things are done and whether you reflect on this question. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's getting harder and harder because we have completed more than 250 buildings. But we love to talk to them. Now we are having interesting, uh, you know, relationship with uh, some old clients. They make some kind of, you know, group. You know, has a, like a fan club. And there are a few groups. They talk to each other. And they sometimes they come to us to talk to us again. But there's one interesting thing I found out. Each client think uh, their architecture is the best. So owner of the roof house thinks mine is the best. And the um, owner of the uh, you know, megaphone house thinks my house is the best. And the Fuji Kindergarten thinks, oh, my architecture, my, my project is the best of the all. Rest is not important. You know, that is a way to be good architect, I think. Yes, I think that's a good point. And another question, you spoke a lot about kindergartens and schools and the situation at the moment, at least in Germany, doesn't allow many children to go to school or to go to the kindergartens. At least in Germany, a lot of the schools are closed. I don't know how the situation in Japan is, but how do you see schools and kindergartens changing with the pandemic that we're seeing at the moment. Do you think it will lead to a different typology in architecture? Okay. I got the same question now many times last one year. My answer is we never changes. I'm sure we are going back to all the style. Because if you refer to history, there have been much worse pandemic situation, you know, past one third of people died. And compared to the, the past, very small percent of people died because more than 90% of people survived, you know, in the past. One third died, sometimes half, okay? And the human beings still get together. There's one interesting uh, definition of human being. Some people say our oh, human beings you know, can write. We can make architecture. But you know, some disabled people. But my answer is definition of human beings that we need somebody's help. We can't be alone. You know, human being is only one kind required uh, uh, somebody to help. When you have a baby, you need somebody to help. You know, this is only one kind. And it has been like that. So it means we need to get together, to live together. We can't live alone. And we can't survive in the forest. 
we can't collaborate. So fundamental existence of human beings, collaboration, we need to be together. So even COVID comes, we don't change. I'm sure six months later, and we are having beer in the bar, saying, Um, thank you. Nano, I think there was another question from you. Yes, I have a question. Um, thank you again for the lecture. It was very, very interesting. Um, obviously, you have done a lot of successful um, buildings for children. And then in yeah. your lecture, uh, we have seen uh, a lot of very interesting churches as well. Mm -hmm. um, was there any point in your career when you felt you were worried about being somewhat typecast into doing uh, certain types of buildings? And are there um, other types of buildings you would be very interested in doing um, in the future? <laughs> and actually, you know, we have designed different building types. I have done highlights, and we are doing another highlights uh, close to Hong Kong, and uh, office buildings. We have designing. Uh, we have been designing uh, junior high school, high school, and then uh, we are designing churches. And that we are, you know, making museums and houses. We do all kinds, but uh, there are still, you know, you know, there are always there are things we haven't done before. But recently, I I started thinking, you know, I want to design something. We can change the world. Recently, we got a request to design a school on top, of the, on top of the mountain in India. And the closest city you can go with the airplane is three days away. And uh, I, I love to help them. And there are about 100 orphans. And when we design something for them, uh, they remember us. And uh, I remember, uh, I think just some, some, some Pope told, you know, the uh, importance of the human being uh, uh, is just like a candle. It's not how candle is looking great. It's uh, the, the importance of the candle is about what the candle is going to lit up. And we have the designed many buildings. I mean, the architecture is also like a candle. It's still true, okay? And we'd like to see what architecture is going to lit up. And I'm seeing the future in the project in India I'm talking about. Three days away from the airport, and then they get only five actually the family around there get only five dollars a month a month and they're trying to survive but i like to see their uh, smiles and uh, we are not going to get money from them but uh, i that is what we really like to do next sounds very amazing <laughs> Good. Maybe I will then go on with one more question, if that's okay. Okay. Um, my question would be, you have shown some quite beautiful models in your presentation okay. um, that I suppose were presentation models. And thus I was wondering um, what kind of role model making plays in your designing process. Okay. In my office, if you don't make five models per day, you get fired. You have to make ideas. So we use a very, we start from small model, even just the Fujiki that we started, I, I started from the small model. I made a model, I make model by myself. And uh, we made, we made an exhibition about Fujiki Nagaden, I think about uh, 15 years ago. Okay. And uh, we found out we made more than 2,000 models 
for that project. 2000. And uh, how many models do you make for a project? Usually. Depends on the project. <laughs> now it's school project. Five, six, ten. Maybe roundabout, yeah. Next. Okay. If you come to my office, you learn how to make the model very quickly. That sounds make like a, a solid knowledge base. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think model is very important. I think just a 3D computer model deceive you. It's all looking good. And of course we have to make 3D because otherwise you can't get any more. And it's a very powerful too. But at the same time, we should know that, you know, the model deceive you. So we think uh, mod making models is very, very important. important. Good. Thank you Thank very you. much. I think that was a beautiful end and a hopeful end for all of us students to get back to work and to start model building. Um, okay, please. Thank you very much also for taking this late hour uh, and for making it possible to speak to you at this time of day. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you, Takehan. It has been really not only a pleasure to for me personally to listen again. I think from what I heard from the students as well. I look forward to know also from the other students what were the impressions. But the way you presented your work, I hope uh, I, they, it was very useful for them. I mean, in a way, we are not even a general lecture to, you know, whatever public. We are talking to students, as you said, and I think you focus very well in that in that sense. So I really uh, would like to see you next time in Berlin. I have to say that. I love Or maybe you, being you and me, maybe it's in a, in a faraway country again, sometime from now on. But I'm sure uh, besides many of our students will really very much like to go to Japan and see you. Yeah. Okay. So Let's thank see. you very much and my regards to Joey. Okay. See you again. See you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.